This is the daily video update for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. We're here at the one mile marker of the Jim Shug Trail in Dryden, New York, where I've been walking and talking about the coursework that I did last week for my Doctorate of Ministry program. We're gonna keep walking a little bit talking about, so what does all this mean for an actual congregation in 2021 and not the Harvard Business Review? So, my professor in this class that just finished was the Reverend Dr. Poe, and Dr. Poe, among many other things, is the director of the Lewis Center for Church Leadership, which is the hosting organization for my program. Sorry, I lost my notes here. And Dr. Poe recently wrote a book called The Adept Church, looking at how to take some of these concepts from business development, concepts like discontinuous change or disruptive innovation, that kind of thing, and apply them to the context of congregational life. Now, churches in some ways are like the Toyota Motor, Motor Company, but in other really important ways, uh, that makes for a very imperfect metaphor. So two points came out of his class that I want to draw out for us on this Friday afternoon. The first is that churches generally go through a cycle of innovation, performance, and crisis. The question is not how to break free from this cycle. There's always going to be cycles where you're in a performative zone where you're doing well with stuff that you've established and you're in innovative zones and you're always going to have crisis zones. So the question is not how to break out of that cycle, but how to live in that cycle and manage it. And it's fair to say that right now, most churches, probably ours, are in crisis. And granted, that's a crisis brought on by one rapid discontinuous change rather than a normal cycle, but a crisis all the more dire for it. And the traditional markers of how we define success, number of new members, pledge payments, engagements in a variety of programs, are either down, candidly, or profoundly changed from what they were a year ago. Speaking for myself, but also a lot of folks in church leadership across the country, we look at the data these days and it is a little unnerving. But in medical terms, a crisis is not always a bad thing. A crisis in medicine is the pivot that changes the course of an illness. It's the night when the patient either gets much worse or the fever breaks. It's going to go one of those two directions. And so the crisis is a scary moment. It's an anxiety producing moment, but it actually has two paths forward from it. So a question for the church is how we want to come out of this crisis. How do we make sure that the fever breaks and, not gets, and doesn't get worse? Doug Poe's answer is that we have to rethink who the church is for. We have to profoundly change direction. We can't keep going in this direction, even though there's a little vole up there going across. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Um, but we have to change direction. We can't keep going the same way that we've been going and expect to have the same result. So, even if that direction is back in a way we came, it looks different the second time through. Reframing how we see the church and how we see the church's mission is at the heart of Dr. Poe's argument. He frames it as wanting to do, wanting to take the church inside out. Because this has been a hard generation for mainline churches. This isn't just about COVID-19. The recent Pew Religious Landscape survey showed that religious affiliation and engagement in America has continued to drop precipitously in the last 20 years. So the old model of building for growth, while it might be true in some locations still, has to be different than it was a generation ago. So we, if we turn the church inside out, Dr. Poe says, that 
in the midst of crisis and moving forward, we should stop asking where we can find new members to come join us and start asking where does our message need to be heard. And that has some interesting implications for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. Just to take one very concrete example. Since I've arrived in Lincoln four years ago, the reason that we haven't done more with the university is simple. The population is too transient to often join the congregation. Undergraduates are in and out in four years, and even graduate students often leave before they are here long enough to fully engage with the congregation. And that's still true. It's true, but it's incomplete. Because if the question is not, how do we get these people to join our church, but instead, where does our message need to be heard, I can think of few people that more need a warm community and who think about meaning and transformation more than students at a university. If the goal is not to get people from the university to UCL, but instead to help them in their own faith formation, then our outreach strategy looks quite a bit different. The other thing that I take away from the class, and, and the one that I think is probably most important to us, is this. We cannot be afraid to experiment and innovate. As this is a lean time at the church, and the instinct in lean times is to focus on what's worked in the past and refine it and make it more efficient. But that throws us straight into the dilemma that we talked about yesterday, right into the teeth of the innovator's dilemma. Because innovations are inefficient. They don't pay off for some time. And so we have to be willing, even in lean times, to make mistakes and try things that might not be as successful at first as what we've grown accustomed to. And those things might not pan out for a few years, and that's counterintuitive but necessary right now, because that is what will turn this crisis into an opportunity, putting us on a road to come out of this pandemic thriving with a new way of being church. So have a great weekend. Enjoy this view of this beautiful place. And I will see you on Monday.